Welcome to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock, who is the co-founder of Videosocials.net and of VideoInterviewPodcast.com. In every episode, Mark interviews business and organizational thought leaders who share their stories of how they inspire others by making a difference. You can find this show on Videosocials.net and YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and almost any podcast platform of your choosing. Welcome. And today, my guest is Christy Zalakis. Christy is the founding attorney of Z Family Law. Welcome, Christy. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. And uh, it's nice to meet you. You know, in full disclosure, we haven't met till just a couple of minutes ago. Um, and you might wonder, how does that happen? Well, um, fact is that uh, Neil Tyra, which is a previous guest on the show and a, and a longtime client or member of Video Socials uh, with us, had recommended you, uh, and he was on he was on my show. So um, it, it is a pleasure to meet you. And I did spend a little bit of time looking at your website and going through some of your social media profiles, and you have some really great information out there for those that you serve. Um, and you're in the family law space. Um, but before we jump too deep into that. I always like to start with what's your story? You know, how did you how did you come to be doing what you're doing and being who you are? Um, so my story, I grew up outside of Philadelphia and I moved to the DC area because I fell in love with DC when I came here in fifth grade to march for dolphin safe tuna. Um, I think that story tells a lot about who I am and and what kinds of things I like to do. I always wanted to be a lawyer. I always wanted to go into family law. Um, one of my favorite things in my home office is a little picture of me in kindergarten saying I want to be a lawyer someday. And it's, it's just something that I've always loved to do. I started this law firm almost exactly five years ago. November 1st will be our fifth anniversary. And I have been so lucky um, in all the growth that we've had and the amazing people that we got to work with. And my story for why I wanted to to do this law firm this way is because I am a huge new beginning enthusiast. Um, I believe there is absolutely no better time than today to have a new beginning if you want one and that you're never too old, you're never too young. And if you're not living the life that you want to live, take stock and make a change. Awesome. And, um, you know, so that gives that gives us a little bit about, you know, one of the first questions that I wanted to ask you is what, you know, what inspired you, but really, what inspired you to do it on your own uh, rather than, than, than join, you know, or, or work with another firm? So first I did work with another firm for about, about eight years and I absolutely love the two partners of those, that firm. I still consider them good friends, but I wanted to do things a little bit different. And mm -hmm. what inspired that was I went through my own breakup approximately 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And it was one of those breakups where I really thought that I had figured out exactly what, how I was going to live the rest of my life with who and everything that was going to happen. And then when it ended, I didn't know what to do next. And it really put me in the shoes of a lot of our clients in a way that I never could have imagined. And I'm not gonna lie, it was tough. It was probably one of the toughest periods of my life. I spent probably a good two months crying on the floor, but I slowly started to figure out what I wanted next. And it was little things like going to lunch with a friend who, instead of saying, I'm so sorry this happened to you, said, congratulations on your breakup. Are you taking over the whole bed now? Um, and that kind of mindset shift really, really started to happen. And I started to make a lot of changes in my life. I moved to a different county. Um, I took a stand-up comedy class. I started to figure out who I was in other ways. I lost weight. I got the Cocker Spaniels that I always wanted. And I started buying blue plates. It's such a silly thing, but you know, everybody has those little compromises that they always agree on. And I wanted blue plates and I got them. And by reclaiming these little pieces of myself, I got to create my own new beginning. And my life today versus 10 years ago is so different and so much more magical than it ever was. And that's because I took the time to get that new beginning. And I wanted to open a law firm that helped inspire other people to use a really hard time in their life, a custody case, a divorce, and make that new beginning and take that as a, a reset button. It's an, that's an awesome um, outlook, I, it, I guess, is, is the best way to put it, because, you know, we, we're all formed, I guess, at, you know, through our successes and our failures and through, and, and through things that have gone well for us and things that, you know, have really challenged us and, and, and we've had to overcome. And, and I love that your, uh, your perspective when, you know, the 
stuck in the mud, as it were, then then your ability to to jump in and say, okay, let, let's create something entirely new. Let's it's so um, absolutely terrific. So around that, then you know, what services you know do you offer your clients? So we offer our goal is to help create and reorganize and protect families going forward. So we do some adoption and eventually we want to get into the surrogacy space. Um, we do divorce, custody, domestic violence, prenuptial agreements, all about reorganizing families. And then we're moving into the estate planning uh, realm as well so that we can protect families moving forward in the future. So anything having to do with the family, we want to help. Terrific. And, and I've I, you probably don't know this about me or even us as a, as an organization. Um, we we drank the mediation Kool Aid. I'm going to say about 15 years ago, <laughs> I met uh, our our first um, mediator client as a marketing company for her. Her name is Ada Haslocker, and she's still a client and has become one one of my best friends. Um, but uh, you know, and and I've uh, I've done keynotes for you know all the major mediation. Um, uh, organizations around the country, et cetera. Um, and so we really, um, one of the things I often say is, is that we need to, we need to drop the word alternative um, because I think it should be a primary uh, to look at resolving conflict rather, rather than, you know, fighting it out. So um, kudos to you for, you know, for really kind of looking at it from that perspective, because I feel like that, um, and, and I realize that you're not just a mediator, um, but one of the, one of the things that that uh, uh, I think a lot of mediators have struggled with is they they end up kind of shoehorned into divorce, and not that they don't love it, and it's you know obviously incredibly challenging, um, uh, you know being the calm in the storm as it were, uh, but in addition in addition to that, there are so many families that could really benefit from having that neutral third party, that sounding board, that um, somebody help them through whatever conflicts that they're dealing with. So um, how is the family mediation and, 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 the, and the family stuff working for you guys? Because we do a lot of it. I would say most of our cases settle in mediation. Now, I will say I'm a big proponent of if it's a divorce with children or divorce with significant assets, having attorneys with you in the mediation. Mm, of course. Um, because mm -hmm. as a mediator, I can't give legal, when I serve as a mediator, mm. I can't give legal advice to either side, nor can I really tell them what's in each of their best interests. I can only present options and help guide a conversation. Mm. That That's, you know, my right. code of ethics as a mediator. As an attorney, I can sit in the mediation and sit next to my client who may be sophisticated and may not, but I may also have ideas that they haven't thought of um, or perspectives that they haven't thought of. And so I personally feel that it's more effective and generally um, we'll get across the finish line in a more durable way when we, when we accomplish it that way. And honestly, I would say maybe 95% of our cases settle in mediation. So it, I'm a huge fan. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, I guess the next question is, uh, you know, you've recently launched an appellate div an appellate division uh, to ha handle these family law appeals. Um, that's new for me. I, I haven't ha had a client or, or or somebody that I've worked with, you know, over the years do something like that. What prompted you to do that, and 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 how's that going? Uh, it's going fantastically. So we have. John Weaver uh, on our team. He is a former family division magistrate in the circuit court for Montgomery County, and he also just loves doing appeals. Uh, he has been doing them for quite a number of years. And if you practice in the family law space, he's probably someone you're going to pick up the phone and call if you have an appeal and haven't done one a long time, or if it's something new to you. And, and we realized that with getting a lot of these calls, there are a lot of lawyers that really haven't had the opportunity to brush up on their research and writing skills and writing a brief is very different than writing a motion. Um, arguing an appeal is very different than putting on a trial. And often, not always, but often you want the appellate attorney to be a different attorney than the trial counsel. I'll give you a very brief example. I tried a case in May of 2022, and it recently went up on appeal. And John in my office, along with Ina Loring in my office, are the ones who did the appeal. And it was great that they did, because as much as I personally love appellate work, I can't remember what 
that into evidence and what didn't get into evidence. And it gets all mixed up in my head because I was trial counsel. And so they're mm -hmm. able to actually just look at the record, look at the transcript and make those arguments much more clearly. And we realized if we were doing that in-house, it's a service that we can provide to other lawyers out there who maybe don't have the time, maybe don't have the experience. Um, and and we can help them with their appeals. And we do that in a number of ways. Either we're happy to take the referral and go ahead and do the appeal ourselves. We're also happy to provide research and writing services where we can actually write the appeal and then the trial counsel can go ahead and do the argument and all of those things. Um, or we can provide you know, some additional support with regard to issue spotting or additional research without doing the writing and things like that. So, and, and finally, although I don't think anybody has taken us up on this, we can just argue it if, if that's trial counsel's preference and the client's preference. Well, it's interesting because I hadn't even thought of it before that it, 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 it having a different attorney who is uh, trying to be helpful, but is, is coming in clean. In other words, they're coming in without all the preconceived, you know, I, I hadn't even considered, you know, you as a, as the person who was involved with the trial or et cetera, you know, you know, all the information that was involved, but, only what actually got presented in court is what's going to be relevant and what's going to be looked at during that appeal. So uh, I hadn't even considered that. That that must be um, almost refreshing, right? Because you know they've got a they've got a clean slate to work with, where they're only dealing with what you know what is actually. So it's, in, in other yep. words, it's kind of without the baggage that you, that that the person um, that the attorney that um, argued the case in the first place um maybe kind of stuck with because there's so many there's so there, there's so much stuff and, and I, I don't know that everybody knows this but you know you take a whole batch of evidence and there's only portions of it that actually end up being presented in court right so um, that's absolutely true and you get lost in the weeds if you were the one who did that three days of trial it it's easy to to get lost in the weeds especially at the end of it awesome well that's terrific well, I, you know, one of the things that as I was, it was, I was looking uh, at you, you've got quite a, uh, an online um, uh, presence uh, and a lot of really great information. And I wanted to make sure that people were aware of it. So, you know, your website is Z Family Law. Um, you have a LinkedIn profile, which is too long to, to, to talk about here, but we will have links in, in all of this. Most of these have to do with either uh, Christy Zalakis or Z Family Law. Uh, you have a LinkedIn company page, Z Family Law LLC, uh, YouTube channel under Z Family Law LLC 97, Facebook under Z Family Law, Instagram under Z Family Law, Z Family dot law, excuse me, and TikTok under Team ZFL. What, yep. is the, what does the FL stand for? Uh, Z Family Law. We we started ah. that one, uh, the TikTok, as a as a team bonding activity back when we first did it, we decided that we were okay. going to do holiday tips for people going through divorce or custody matters for the first time. And we kind of made it like a little fun team project. And that's why we called it team ZFL. And okay. then we actually started getting cases from it and people wanting information. So we kept it up, but the handle was always team ZFL since we did it as a team. Well, that's terrific. And, and, so along with that, and what I wanted to bring up in all this is that you've got quite a bit of content there that is of value to people in the fact that that content stands on its own. It's, 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 it's not all about trying to get people to come, you know, work with you. It's about trying to make a difference out there, which is why, frankly, we're having this conversation. So um, I, I appreciate that mindset. Uh, and it sounds like you have, you have inspired that mindset throughout your, uh, throughout your firm. So Thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It is definitely one of the pillars on which our firm is built. Uh, one is education, because we feel that people can only make good decisions about their life if they're empowered by knowledge. And then another one is community service. And our social media presence serves both. I really, really like that. So, um, and and again, you know, you you were uh, referred to have this conversation by Neil Tyra, and and Neil is a member of, of Video Socials, and we're self-sponsored. So I just wanted to take a moment to to uh, discuss what that was about. And Video Socials is uh, for those of us who may be able to stand in front of a judge and argue a case, or may be able to stand in front of an audience of thousands and have a conversation, and not sure how to translate those skills to 
a video or a talking head video like uh, like we commonly see um, and or somebody who is, uh, you know, top of their field. They, 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 they know their business. They know what they're doing, but they just aren't all that comfortable yet with being in front of a camera and translating again the conversation like you and I are having now um, to an inanimate object called a camera. So we created video socials, which is exactly what it says. We get together in groups of five to 10 uh, professionals and we take turns recording our two or three minute uh, videos. Um, we say marketing videos, but the reality is, is that it, it is doing exactly what you've done, which is sharing information that's valuable, that's educational, that can make a difference on its own. Um, and that of course, putting that out there in the world gives us, um, puts us in a position where uh, we become branded experts uh, and, and, and people learn to know, like, and trust us via, you know, this medium called video, which of course is dramatically more impactful um, than just text or, or even just audio. So um, we'd love to have uh, anyone uh, who's watching this as a guest. It's videosocials.net. Please click the guest tab at the top of the screen. There's no cost, there's no obligation. But uh, if you're looking at trying to use video uh, for your marketing to, to, to expand your business, um, I can't think of a better way of, of, of taking a look at it. And, and I think uh, you would find it very enjoyable because um, it is a judgment-free zone and we practice. Uh, with each other and we learn by doing so um, anyway so along with that did you have any other um, shall we say examples or um, you know a, a, rec a recent case a recent client that uh, um, really kind of stands out for you that might give give people a bit when you're when you're in in divorce law as an example um, that you really felt like you know what you guys do and, the, and your approach made a difference different than sure. somebody else well i don't want to share anybody else's story who's not comfortable with it but there's someone on my team i know would not mind if i shared their story okay um, our client relationship manager monica is also a former client of the firm um mm -hmm. she came to the firm with me from my previous firm and and we finished her divorce here. And I will tell you, I needed a client relationship manager before um, I hired her. And I knew exactly who I wanted. So I really held off until her divorce was over and she was no longer my client. And I posted the job and I sent it to her and I said, please apply. Uh, and she is exactly who I needed because when she came to us, she was at one of the lowest moments of her life. She was going through a really challenging divorce. She had two very little kids. And while she has an amazing family who supports her, she still really had it to start over. And she shares this story with a lot of our clients. When she first came to me, she didn't even have enough money to necessarily pay the parking meter outside my office. Right. And she was afraid her car was going to get towed. And she didn't tell me that at the time. I would have gone outside and paid the parking meter. But she, she, she was really at a low, low, low point. And the encouragement that we were able to provide her throughout her divorce, even little things like when she would call the office, I made sure that a receptionist goes, hey, how are so-and-so, so-and-so, the two names of her children, which I'm not going to say on a social media you know, podcast, but she felt that we knew her, cared about her, cared about her children, and cared about her getting to the other side. And she now works with us as a client relationship manager. She can tell our clients very directly what it was like to work with us versus she tried a pre another law firm previously the difference between somebody answering the phone law offices and somebody answering the phone see family law we create new beginnings how can we help you right. the difference between sitting across from somebody across a desk versus sitting with them on a couch or next to them at a, a conference room table and being their partner through this rather than being the person dictating down to them from on high and that's the difference that we provide and her being able to share that and seeing who she is today. She is a homeowner. She is, you know, thriving at Z Family Law. She ha has people working under her now at Z Family Law. Her children are doing amazing things. And watching her grow has been one of the highlights of my career. Um, and in fact, in our office, uh, her family gave me a painting that her father did. And it is, it is a horizon and it reminded 
her and her mother of a new beginning and thought it belonged there. And seeing that every day, getting to see her every day and getting her to see, getting to see her hold the hands of our clients the way I held her hand is truly one of the most rewarding experiences. I so appreciate that story because it's, it's, um, when we seek to reach out to help somebody and, and we do, you know, and when, when we, because we look, I think you're, you're, you're like me. We have to bring our whole selves to work, right? <laughs> what we do is, is, uh, um, um, not only makes a difference, but it, it, it is often, obviously a divorce is an incredibly difficult thing to, to go through. Um, and, and so this doesn't, deciding to be on video is, is not uh, along those lines of, of, of level of difficulty. But for most people, public speaking is like the second most terrifying thing there is to do, right? So um, we always have to recognize, we always have to recognize that and, and, and understand and, um, and be willing to, um, Really, what I wanted to, the point that I wanted to get to is is that a willingness to have a conversation, a willingness to 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 be bring our whole selves into these conversations, and to um, uh, and really speak from the heart, not just from you know the legal standpoint or the you know crossing the T's and dotting the I's. The T's have to get crossed. The I's have to get dotted. Obviously, especially in your world, um, but what we're dealing with inside, how we're feeling, what, you know, the, the, the trauma that we're going through that, you know, the, um, the facing of the unknown, it's just so much easier to deal with that when you've got somebody that's truly on your side and is there to support you in that process, not just from the, what are your rights standpoint as is typical, I think in, 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 uh, in divorce law, but is, is actually there to support you both from the legal standpoint as well as frankly financial standpoint and and most importantly the um, the emotional standpoint and don't forget somebody to help you see the opportunities absolutely absolutely well to see what's possible exactly to see what's possible when we're in the depths of that kind of anguish it's difficult to see what might be possible you know um, coming forward. Um, you had mentioned earlier with children, this isn't something that we, that, that we, that we discussed. Uh, and one of the main reasons that I'm such a proponent of using mediation or collaborative law or doing something other than just going to war, um, because the kids often take the brunt of that. Um, how do you, how do you help people deal with and understand and, 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 and um, support families moving forward um even though a divorce you know a, a transition or transformation of the relationship is happening but the kids still need their parents one of the things we talk about is really reorganizing a family we don't mm -hmm. speak of it like a divorce or a break mm -hmm. it, it is reorganizing uh if you'll notice our logo is a tree and that's because i always explain divorce as a tree branch kind of divides at a certain mm -hmm. point but if one of the two branches becomes weak, if it gets hit by lightning, if it gets diseased and it falls, it pulls the other one down with it. And so you really have to support each other for that tree to stay stay up, stay strong, and for new branches to grow. And that is actually literally where our uh, logo came from. And that example is how we think of families. Um, you may not like your soon-to-be ex-spouse very much right now, but at the end of the day, your children are half them. You got to remember that they're half them. You got to remember that every time you speak of them, every time you write something about them, certain tips and tricks that I'll give my clients or give our clients are things like, uh, don't listen to quack. <laughs> we have a whole uh, pod or a, a whole blog around that, but the quack is the unnecessary little jabs and jibber jabbers that people go back and forth and we're like, just answer right. the question, be basic. Um, another one is if you really can't stand them, change in your phone their name to your child's name's father or your child's name's mother or your child's name's parent. And remember that. Um, I also work as a parent coordinator. And when I'm in my parent coordinating sessions with permission of the parties, I don't refer to them by their names. I refer to them by mom and dad mm -hmm. because that is who they are in that room. And that is who they are making decisions is mom and dad. They are co-CEOs of the life of their child or children. 
And so those are some of the ways that we try to change the mindset around that. You don't get to choose who you co-parent with at this point. You're stuck. So figure out how to do so in a way that puts your child first and also allows room for a different type of parenting. And I say that to both moms and dads. Um, people parent differently. And there are 999 correct ways to parent a children, child. I'm not saying there aren't some wrong ones, um, but you're not going to agree. And that's okay because your children can experience different types of parenting in the same way as they're going to experience different types of teaching by different teachers that they're going to have. And they're going to experience different you know, versions of religion by different religious leaders they have and different friendships with different friends. They can have two different relationships, with two different parents, and there's room for all of that. When it all comes back to it, I love your your analogy of the of the tree and the and the separation of the branches and and uh, um, I've never heard it I've never heard it presented that way. Um, I'm going to use that <laughs> and suggest it for others because I I um, I couldn't agree more and um, and I love your approach um, to coaching the family through. Um, how to make that? How to make this a, a transition for the kids that is not one that is that is a, um, brings all the conflict into it, but actually, but actually brings it, brings it to really both parties need to understand that they are co-parenting for the rest of their lives. Oh yeah, and don't forget, especially younger kids. I mean, it's a little different with teenagers, but especially with younger kids, you can pump them up for almost anything right? We as parents do that all the time. Like school's going to be great. You're going to go to the doctor and have a great time. Like the dentist is going to be fine. You can pump them up for a lot of different things. You get to have two different rooms. Aren't you so excited that we're going to decorate this room and you're going to decorate that room and you can have two different themes? How cool is that? You get to celebrate your birthday twice. You get to have two Christmases. Like oh, this is yeah. fantastic. And you're going to have such a great time getting you do all these things over and over again. And you're going to get to see the best part of mom and the best part of dad or dad and dad, mom and mom, whatever the family situation is. Mm -hmm. And how cool is that? And our family is going to, you know, if you're marrying someone else, having our family is going to grow. How awesome is that? It's all in a lot of times how you present it. If, if you sit down, your children have a very somber, your parents are divorcing. We're so sad. We're so sorry. We're so this, it's going to be different, but it's going to be okay. How do you think your children are taking that? Versus, hey, our family's going to go through some changes, but we're here for you. It's okay. And let's tell you about the exciting parts of it and what you get to do. Right. Of course, caveat, make sure you check with your child's therapist to make sure it's the right approach for that. I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to have met you, I got to say. Um, and I'm so glad that you, uh, that you came on today because um, the world needs more voices like this and, 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 and I think more people that are in and around family conflict, especially in the divorce arena, um, need to look at this. Re you're, you're talking about reframing and, and, and framing for uh, the benefit of the child so that, uh, you know, taking that half is glass, uh, that, that glass is half empty. And, uh, and not only that it's half full, but actually it gets to overflow and, 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 and maybe they have two glasses now. Right. So just awesome. I, I really appreciate it, Christy. That's uh, uh, I love your approach. So, folks, if you're coming into or dealing with family issues uh, that you'd like some help with, especially in the realm of, of, of divorce or separation, please do look up Chris, uh, Christy, and and she's got lots of great information again out there on TikTok, on her website, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, et, et, et cetera, et cetera. All the links will be uh, with us and associated with us. Um, I thank you uh, for coming in today and having this conversation with us, Christy. And, and uh, um, congratulations on making it five years. And it sounds like you guys are, are are rocking and rolling. It's not just a surviving kind of kind of practice. It's a you're making a difference. And thank you for the difference that you make. Um, thank you. You're, you're very very welcome. Um, anything that you that you'd like to say if 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 somebody's not sure where to go if what to do they not sure whether or not how to even talk about maybe i want to get separated maybe i want to get divorced should they should should they have a conversation with you if, if that early on 
Absolutely. Uh, we do a lot of divorce planning um, and planning even how to tell your spouse, how to tell your children and whether or not, you know, take a look at the other side and see what what makes sense. Uh, at one point we joked that I was a matchmaker because I kept meeting with people and they kept returning to their marriages. Um, but having that conversation with a qualified licensed family law attorney can really help make a difference. Um, and don't be afraid to really seek out somebody who knows what they're doing in family law. Um, it is one of those areas that a lot of attorneys, unfortunately, like to dabble in, and it's not an area that is appropriate for dabbling. Find someone that this is what they do day in, day out. They work with families. They see the same families year, you know, year after year. They know how they're doing. They understand the impact of the court orders that they are creating mm -hmm. um, and the family separation agreements that they are creating and can help you make sure that the document you have is durable, workable, and grows with your family. Awesome. Christy Zalakis, thank you. And um, folks, do check out um, all of the great content that uh, they have on uh, available online and and, uh, and and don't hesitate to reach out. I think you can see that uh, you're not going to get judged. You're not going to get through, you're not going to get shoehorned into a into a, a legal process. You're 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 going to get some counsel and and you might even get a friend. Um, and I can easily say every single person on my team has been handpicked by me and are just phenomenal people who see divorce the same way. Um, we, we definitely have a mission in this world and that is to create new beginnings through your family law matters and make sure that if that is what you want, a new beginning, find someone that aligns with that value. Absolutely wonderful. And I think we'll close with that. Thank you again, Christy. And folks uh, stick around and do subscribe to an Inspiring Business. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. You've been listening to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock. Your positive comments, likes, and most importantly, your sharing of this show with others is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to the Inspiring Business Podcast on whatever platform you prefer. You can catch prior episodes on videosocials.net and on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all the major podcast platforms.